$30 a ton. When Stephenville's plan for the old train fell apart, it was moved next door to Stephenville Crossing, a town built on the railway. We were the center, I guess the hub of this, this area at the time, and everything that went to other parts of the area from here passed to here. But this town's plan for the relics died too, partly because money ran out, mostly because vandals took over. Everything you can talk about. Uh, every seat was stolen out of it. We, uh, we board up the windows one night, and I'd come down the next morning and everything would be open again. We put chains on the doors. You can see the big chains we had there. We had them locked with extra heavy-duty locks, and they just took them in. We, every window was broken out. The damage became more than an eyesore. It became a safety hazard. So, this week, firefighters incinerated its interior. Today, welders are cutting the train apart. Well, it's been here a long time, right? It should have stayed here. Karen Young sees the dismantling every time she pumps gas. That's kind of disgusting to see that such a nice thing was ruined, right? Because that could have been a big impact to the tourism, right? Could be not already, you'd left it alone. I just thought it would be there forever, right? Attacks on old trains seem to have become popular. One in Port Abbas was intentionally gutted, the same in Bishop's Falls. In Corner Brook this week, someone broke nearly a dozen windows out of the Railway Association's labor of love. The association says it may be only a matter of time when all that's left are the memories. Terry LeBrie, CBC News, Stephenville Crossing. 1500 land into two parked box cars. Paramedics work.